Hi, brothers and sisters. This is Ryan Zell with another presentation. Much rumors and conspiracy theories swirl around the Vatican obelisk. What exactly is it and what does it represent? Why is it in the Vatican? There are many myths that swirl in the popular culture of the American cult religions regarding the Vatican obelisk. Almost all originate in the United States, which has had in the 17th century became the dumping ground for the bad rubbish of which existed in Protestant Europe. European mainstream Protestants sought to cleanse themselves of the radical elements within their society and to put as much distance between themselves and these seditious religious fanatics as possible, out of sight, out of mind, so they say. These were the hicks and the yokels of Protestant Europe who had become the useful idiots to various revolutionary religious causes and demagogues, so much so that their existence in Europe was a threat to the stability of European states. They did not cease to be hicks and yokels once they got off the boat. No, they remained the same dumb hicks and yokels they always were. So it should not be surprising that it is among these imbecilic dunces that such anti-Catholic myths are manufactured and peddled and find their popularity. According to these myths, which have circulated among these clod-hopping imbeciles, is that the Vatican obelisk employed for sun worship, or that it is a pagan phallus which is worshipped, or that it is an occultic or pagan object or a Freemasonic symbol. Of course, one cannot convince these Protestant morons that there is a rational reason for it being where it is. But there are others who may ask in good faith, what is the purpose of the Vatican obelisk, and as to what purpose it may serve? Please feel free to pause the video and read the statements in white and blue from Protestants who have entered the stupid zone. The Vatican obelisk was commissioned by Pharaoh's Menkares, quarried in Ashwan out of red granite, and transported to Heliopolis in Lower Egypt where it was erected in about 1835 BC. The Vatican obelisk has no inscription from this time period, and as there is no historical record as to which temple entrance this particular obelisk adorned. However, it is known that such obelisks were erected outside temples, particularly in Heliopolis, an ancient Egyptian city that is modern-day Cairo. Heliopolis was the center of worship for the cult of Ra. The obelisk is the stylized form of a ray of light emitted by the sun, the solar disk descending to earth and symbolized Ra, who was the sun god. When the Egyptian Ptolemaic kingdom was conquered by Rome, Augustus Caesar commissioned Cornelius Gallus to have it moved to Alexandria and erected at the Forum dedicated to his uncle Julius Caesar in that city. In 37 AD, Caligula ordered that the Vatican obelisk was brought to Rome to be erected on an estate he had inherited from his mother, Agrippina the Elder. The estate was located on the west bank of the Tiber outside Rome in an area known as the Gaionium or Vatican Hill. Caligula had taken up chariot racing and sought to build a private circus at the Gaionum. In 40 AD, Caligula began construction on the circus, which was completed sometime during the reign of Claudius. The Vatican obelisk was erected on the central spine of the circus of Caligula in that same year. The obelisk would remain standing in this location for the next 1546 years. Later, when Nero became emperor, he opened the circus to the public and it became known as the Circus of Nero. Nero held public events at this circus to entertain the plebeians of Rome and gain their favor. The circus would come to be known by several different names, the Circus of Gaius and Nero, the Circus of Caligula, or the Circus of Nero, and even the Vatican Circus. The obelisk 
had no religious significance to the Romans. They existed merely as civic memorials or as decorative elements or as landmarks to the Romans. In 64 AD, a fire swept through Rome, which burned for seven days, leaving 65% of the city utterly burned to the ground. Thousands perished and many more left homeless. The citizens of Rome blamed their 26-year-old emperor for the fires as rumors swirled that he had conspired to burn the city to the ground. Nero seeking to shift the blame, he found an easy scapegoat in the nascent Catholic communities of Rome. Nero began a program against the Catholics whom he blamed for setting the fires. The circus of Nero became one of the venues to hold public execution of Catholics. Many Catholic martyrs died at the circus of Gaius and Nero between 64 and 68 AD. Of course, all the martyrs were without exception Catholics, as there was not a single Protestant among these early martyrs. Though Protestants today attempt to deceive us by falsely claiming these martyrs are their co-religists, while claiming Catholics are not Christians. One of the martyrs was the first Pope, the Prince of the Apostles, St. Peter who was crucified upside down at the Circus of Gaius and Nero in 66 AD. St. Peter was entombed in a nearby Vatican necropolis after his execution. I also want to point out that the Apostle Paul took the easy way out and claimed Roman citizenship and had his head chopped off and didn't have to go through the torture of both an execution and the interrogation that usually precedes it. The circus of Gaius and Nero was abandoned in the middle of the second century. The city of Rome, even at that time, was largely situated on the east bank of the Tiber, and the circus of Nero was outside the city walls on the west bank. Combined with that and the fact that the necropolis existed next to the circus would have made the Circus of Nero rather an unpopular attraction among the Roman Christians. Eventually, the Circus of Nero was repurposed for the expansion of the nearby Vatican necropolis as Rome needed sites to entomb the dead. Both Catholics and pagans were entombed in the Vatican necropolis, but since St. Peter was entombed there, Many Catholics wished to be entombed there nearby, looking forward to the resurrection of the dead. The Vatican Necropolis became a pilgrimage site, and the sacred liturgy was conducted in the catacombs at the tombs of the martyrs. The Vatican Obelisk continued to remain in the location it was erected. Even the surrounding circus fell into ruin, and the remaining structure of the circus was repurposed as tombs and ossuaries. In about 319 to 20, Emperor Constantine commissioned the building of St. Peter's Basilica on the site of Peter's martyrdom. Old St. Peter's took 40 years to complete and upon its completion remained outside the walls of Rome. While Old St. Peter's was never the cathedral of the popes, the basilica was nevertheless the coronation site for many kings and emperors such as Clovis, Charlemagne, and Otto, who became the Pope's vassals. The Vatican obelisk became known as the St. Peter's Needle or Spire during this period of time and continued to stand at the site where it had been erected. Pope Nicholas V wanted to move the obelisk from the side of St. Peter's Basilica to a more prominent location in front of the Basilica, but no one could be found willing to or able to move the obelisk, including Michelangelo. When Antiochus Epiphanes III seized the temple in the 2nd century BC, the temple in Jerusalem was desecrated by sacrificing pigs and swine upon the altar. A statue of uh, Antiochus was also erected within the confines of the temple. Protestants, oops, I meant prostitutes, 
were performing unheard of sexual acts within the temple and upon the altar. It is absolutely imperative for us to understand that the obelisk was cleansed of its pagan origins and was clean as the temple was by ritual cleansing. If not, Jesus Christ was worshiping in a desecrated and unclean temple. I cannot even imagine that. The Vatican obelisk was one of 13 obelisks in Rome. It is the second tallest obelisk in the world at 84 feet or 25.5 meters in height. The obelisk weighs 368 U.S. tons or 331 metric tons. It is the only obelisk that has never toppled over. In the early church, the Vatican obelisk was associated with St. Peter as it marked the place of his martyrdom. St. Peter was crucified at the Circus of Nero. St. Peter's Basilica is built upon the Circus of Nero, and the main altar sits directly over the tomb of St. Peter. Many Christians were martyred and entombed in the Vatican's catacombs. The Vatican obelisk exists as a symbol of Christ and his one holy Catholic and apostolic church's triumph over the pagan Roman Empire. The heroic witness of the martyrs overcame the greatest empire which has ever existed until that point in history and succeeded in converting the pagans of the empire to the true faith. The Vatican obelisk serves as a memorial to all those martyrs of the early church and their witness of the Catholic faith. How were the obelisks used in the worship of Baal? The problem is that most of the uneducated Protestant dunces have a problem recalling any other deity other than Baal. It is the only name in a Protestant hat from which they draw in an attempt to culminate their opponents. If the Bible did not mention Baal, they would have not known that Baal was an idol. So the ignoble Protestants reuse the name, the name Baal to slander the opposition. Baal was considered a deity by some of the region of Palestine and the northwestern Fertile Crescent. What we have here is the wrong civilizations and the wrong regions. It would be similar to one claiming that Joe Biden was the Caliph of Germany. Were the obelisks considered phallic symbols? The idiots, well, we're talking about Protestants and unProtestant Protestants, strike out again. They mistake everything which is tall or long for a phallic symbol and associated with paganism demonstrating that the heterodox suffer from a severe case of acute phallic envy. The fact remains that the obelisks had no phallic significance, but symbolized a ray of sunlight descending to earth from the solar disk and nothing more than that. However, the uneducated heterodox mind is a fertile breeding ground for a whole host of conspiracy theories as if they are looking for the boogeyman under their beds. Well, the obelisks worshipped by the Egyptian cult of Ra, there is no indication that the obelisks were worshipped as part of any ritual by the cult of Ra. They existed largely as decorative architectural elements for Egyptian temples in Heliopolis. The Romans maintain a policy of non-interference with the religious practices of the conquered nations and would not have removed these obelisks if they had been a part of ritual worship at the time of the Roman conquest of the Ptolemaic Egypt. That said, the cult of Ra had ceased to exist 700 years prior to the Alexandrian conquest of Egypt. The last high priest of Ra was Nebamartar, the son of Ramses IX of the 20th dynasty. Did the obelisks have religious significance to the Romans? One must differentiate between the Roman pagan religion and the Roman civic religion. The obelisks had no significance within Roman paganism. Some obelisks had some significance to the civic religion of the Romans in that they commemorated the memory of illustrious peoples 
and persons in the Roman Empire. The Vatican obelisk commemorates the memory of Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, and Tiberius Caesar. This is no different from Nelson's column in Westminster or any memorial centopath to the fallen soldiers in war. Even during the Roman times, obelisks existed as decorative elements of circuses as landmarks. Why did the obelisk contain Freemasonic symbols? Obelisks do not contain Freemasonic symbols. Rather, Freemasons appropriated some ancient elements, giving these elements some significant symbolism within Freemasonry. Freemasonry sought to create a mystic past for its secretive organization and present this inauthentic, ahistoric construct as its history. The ahistoric narrative in which they claim that the Freemasons built the temples of ancient Egypt and King Solomon's temple will contrive to create the illusion of a mythic past which did not exist. The reality is that the Freemason formed in 1717 as a fraternal organization had no association with anything prior to that time. Why is there a pagan sun wheel in St. Peter's Square if Catholics do not worship the sun? Believe it or not, America's crazy heterodox Protestants and unprotestant Protestants accuse Catholics of sun worship. This accusation originates usually from the Seventh-day Adventist cults. There are 585 of them. This is another one of those anti-Catholic myths which the uneducated Protestants pull out of their posteriors and serve up as fact. There is no pagan sun wheel at St. Peter's Square. No one believes Catholics worship the sun except these buffoons who repeat to each other old Protestant wives' tales. What exists is a sundial. Sundials were used to indicate the time in ancient cultures. The Vatican obelisk does act as a pointer, casting a shadow on the pavement, which is inlaid as a dial. While no one was using sundials in 1817 as a method to tell the time when the pavement was inlaid with a dial, it was merely acting as a decorative element. Please consider subscribing to Christian Virtue and Grace and engage in the conversation by commenting. Do not forget to hit the like button.